and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I've got something brand new to show you. You can just see it peeking out a little bit here. It's from Dixie Bell Paint. It's a brand new transfer, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did with it. As you can see, these have got a nice curve design on the front. We don't get much curvy furniture in the UK, so as soon as these popped up on Facebook Marketplace, I threw the kids in the car and went and got them straight away. I love me some curvy furniture. We just don't get a lot of it in the UK, especially not in this condition and as nice kind of shape as these. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply a transfer over a curved surface or how I do it, and also how to get a continuous pattern with a transfer over several draw fronts. Again, how I do it. There's so many methods out there, so many different ways of doing it. This is just the way that makes sense to me. So first I gave them a good clean with Dixie Bell's White Lightning and then rinsed them. And then there was a couple of dings on the top of the bedsides. So I started sanding them out, but it quickly realized that the varnish finish that was on here it was so tough and durable that I just wasn't going to be able to scuff sand these so I filled the dents sanded them smooth and then I'm going to use a problem solving primer from Dixie Bell called Bond Emboss you've probably seen me use it before but for those that haven't Bond Emboss is a water-based primer and it allows you to paint slippery shiny surfaces that you can't sand so you've seen me use it before on things like glass laminate plastic and metal but you can also use it on solid wood pieces like these bedsides that just it would have taken me hours to sand through that finish and this is just going to save me an absolute load of time so the first coat went on nice and easy once it was dry i then just went over them again to see if there were any imperfections now as you can see here there's some holes these aren't woodworm holes they are holes made to artificially age the piece they're all very consistent and they were in exactly the same place on both bedsides so i did originally fill those holes first time round but sometimes a filler can shrink so sometimes i like to apply my first coat of primer and just see what imperfections arise once that primer has gone on so i refilled all of the imperfections sanded them smooth and then applied a second coat of primer now the primer's got to dry for 24 hours before you can paint your piece and that's because it's a water-based primer and it needs time to dry thoroughly before you apply your paint the paint that i'm going to use is silk all-in-one mineral paint it's really easy to use it's got a built-in top coat and it's also got a built-in stain blocking primer but because i've primed with bond emboss i don't really need to worry about that side of things but it has got a built-in top coat so that is why i love using silk because if you know me you know i don't like using top coat particularly the color that i'm using is quiet cove it's a really pale blue shade and this is the transfer that is brand new to dixie bell paint it's called dragonfly blooms it's a kind of sepia color and it's a continuous pattern across four pages so to get this transfer to look continuous across all of these draw fronts first i'm going to trim it down so i'm not working with quite as much transfer flapping around getting in the way but i'm not going to trim it down exactly i'm going to give myself a slight overhang because even if i measure 82 times i'm still always not going to measure it correctly i don't know about you i do it with decoupage paper i do it with transfers so i'm going to give myself an overhang then i taped off the side and the bottom of the drawers and then i'm going to put it on so this transfer is not big enough to cover the entire draw front so i'm going to have a join in the center so i'm going to come to that in a second now as you can see i'm going to start burnishing it just roughly to get the transfer to stick to the drawer so it's not going to shift about and then i'm going to use a craft knife this is a really sharp knife it's got a fresh blade in it and i'm going to really gently slice through the transfer before i've taken the backing sheet off or burnished it properly and i'm going to do that across the bottom and on the left hand side of each segment so where that drawer there, there is a gap in the drawer or the base of the piece basically anywhere where there's a gap where the drawer needs to run i'm going to slice it and then i'm going to treat each individual section separately 
that way you're not having to worry about grappling with the rest of the transfer you can just concentrate on that small little bit and make sure it's smooth across the curved surface if this was flat it'd be a lot easier to do but because you've got to kind of work with that curve I find this way a lot easier so each segment was done individually and then the last thing you need to do is just peel the tape off and that is going to give you a nice crisp line the next thing we need to do is join the transfer up so this is the second sheet I've cut it down again but with a slight overhang as before I am actually useless at joining transfers up so what happened next is not surprising to say the least again taped off at the top on the right hand side and the bottom and then I went and lined up the transfer but left a gap because that's what I do every single time I join a transfer there's always a gap and it's just who I am it's just part of who I am so I treated exactly the same way applied each piece separately snipping it down with the craft knife and just working methodically down the piece if you look closely you can see that there is a little bit of a visible line where the transfers didn't quite meet so first I'm going to top coat it I'm using clear coat in flat and I'm just going to go around the edges and make sure all the transfer is stuck down properly this is going to seal the transfer before we start tinkering around and trying to match up that pattern so I used three colours from Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint range and mixed them by eye until I had the same colour as the transfer. For this I used rustic red, chocolate and a little bit of pine cone to give me that kind of sepia colour and then I used the smallest artist brush that I had and just really carefully with feather like touches just joined in the gap. It's a minuscule gap, it was millimetre if that but it's visible obviously because it's a break in the pattern so this way you are just joining lines it's not artistic it doesn't require any special talent I promise you if I can do it anybody can do it and all you're doing is leaving that basically removing that gap and leaving a little bit of paint in that gap so that it looks like a continuous pattern once that paint's all sealed up, I then re-top coated the drawer fronts and just did another two coats of clear coat flat. And then because I didn't want to add any paint to the lips of the drawers because they were quite tight where they fit into the drawers, I just used a little bit of gilding wax in bronze. And there we have it, a bright and breezy makeover with a brand new transfer. I'm pretty pleased with how these turned out. This is possibly one of my favourite ever transfers that Dixie Bell have done. It's super versatile. I'm definitely going to be using it again in the future. Here's a few close-ups of the transfer on the pieces. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. And here's the final shot of the stage bedsides. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. As always, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will catch you next time. Bye! <laughs>